So from the last video, we need to make our model transform matrix, apply it to each vertex, get our new position, and then take that new position, apply the perspective projection matrix, and that will give our perspective position, which we can then render or look at in the screen. Actually, let me bring that back up. We're going to need two matrices, obviously, one and two. Model transform, projected, or projection transform. Let's do the model transform first. We'll do it right here before we say draw elements. I want to say mate4. I can't say mate4. I don't have a using for it. Using GLM mate4. Then down here mate4 model transform matrix gets GLM translate. I don't have a translate. I have a transpose. I need translate. I need to include another GLM header file to get that. GLM slash GTC slash matrix transform.hpp. This has all the transformation function there. So I want to say translate. And in translate, it requires an initial matrix to go off of. This is for chaining matrices, which we'll do very soon. But for now, I'm just going to say, here, here's a brand new matrix. Just roll with it. And then... Uh, we need a VEC3. Let me just fill these in with zeros first. Control C, V, 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 parenthesis, parenthesis. And I wanted to translate it negative three units in the Z direction. So that is our model transform matrix. This matrix right here is that matrix. Now we need the projection matrix. Okay, or a projection operator, as I was calling it in the last video. You can think of the operator as operating on each vertex, and out pops a new vertex. Mate4 projection matrix gets GLM perspective. I gave you a sneak preview of this in the last video where I was talking about the near plane, the far plane, talking about frustum and field of view and all that. We're going to talk about all this. I'll show you some demos, how these things change. For now, just bear with me. 60.0F for my field of view. Aspect ratio is a ratio of how wide the screen is to how tall it is. We'll talk about that in greater detail later. For now, I'm just going to say, hey, give me the width. And width is an int, and I need to cast it to a float so that we have some floating point division here instead of integer division. Otherwise, I'll probably just get a zero out of this. But the width divided by the height is the proper aspect ratio. The near plane and the far plane, you generally want these planes cl as close as possible to each other. Uh, I'll explain why later. I kind of gave you a sneak preview of that when I flattened the box but didn't have it flattened too much. We want our scene to flatten less. We'll talk about that more. For now, I'm going to say, hey, uh, put that near plane right in front of my face. And the far plane, let's just put it out to 10. That should be plenty wide. So now we have the projection matrix and the model transform matrix. The model transform matrix, projection matrix, we're going to leave it to our vertex shader to apply these matrices to each vertex one by one. So we need to send these matrices to our shader uh, using uniforms. But first things first, let's actually go to our shader, vertex shader code, make a new vertical tab group, bring that over. And in here, we'll just say uniform mate4. Isn't that nice? The GLM library uses the exact same syntax that we use in GLSL. mate4 model transform matrix. Uniform mate4 projection matrix. Let's get these uniform locations and send the uniform data down to our shader. So GL int model transform matrix uniform location that's a good nice long variable name for you gl get uniform location program id and let's go to a new line here and then the name of our uniform is model transform matrix so i'll just copy that put that in a string over here gl int Projection matrix uniform location gets GL get uniform 
location, program ID again, and projection matrix. I'll just grab that and paste that right there. And now that we have the locations of these uniforms, which again are just register locations on your graphics card, we'll talk about those details later. I need to send our data into the uniform data. Okay, we're going to pass these matrices into our uniforms, and they will be uniform over every single vertex. Every vertex that this vertex shader runs on will have the exact same values for their matrices, unless I come back and say, hey, use a different uniform value and render another geometry, or render the geometry again, hint, hint, a little bit of foreshadowing there, what's coming up in future videos. GL uniform matrix for FV, the four means it's a four by four matrix. The FV, this is float vector again. We've seen that in previous videos. And the whole reason we do this is because OpenGL is C compatible and C doesn't have function overloading. Model, transform, uniform, location, count. There's one matrix. The Boolean transpose. That means, hey, OpenGL, please transpose my matrix. Let's not talk about that. Don't worry about it. Leave my matrix alone. That's what I'm going to say there. And then I need to pass a pointer to... 16 floats, which this matrix is. It's 16 continuous floats. So I'll use the similar trick what we used before. Model transform matrix. Let's put this on new line. Model transform matrix. Give me the first vector in the matrix. Give me the first entry in that vector. That returns a reference to a float that I can take an address of. And this will be the first float in my sequence of 16 floats. Let's put the closing parenthesis here. We need to do the exact same thing for the projection matrix uniform. So GL uniform matrix <laughs> matrix for FV projection matrix uniform location. There's there's one of them. GL faults. Please don't transpose my matrix e. and the address of projection matrix sub zero sub zero i could also do a reinterpret cast of the address of my projection matrix and not use these brackets if you have no idea what i'm talking about don't worry about it okay that sends the uniform data down to our our vertex shader all that's left is to use that uniform information to do that work i was talking about right here we need to apply the model transform against the original vertex to get our new position and then we take that new position, apply our projection matrix, which will give us our projected position. And we need to do that to every single vertex. Thankfully, the vertex shader, the hardware, will manage that for us. So I wonder, nice to keep that on screen, but I guess I'll take it off. Let's come in here. Instead of saying GL position gets just the regular position, we were just using two-dimensional coordinates to start out with. I'll instead say VEC for... P gets VEC4 position, so we'll take our three-dimensional position, widen it to four dimensions. Uh, let's not talk about the fourth dimension. Uh, I do talk about it in detail in the Game Engine programming playlist. For now, just know that we have to do this trick where we take our three-dimensional position, widen it to the fourth dimension so we can apply a four by four matrix. Once we have our original position, or I guess on this chart I called it V, so... I shall call it V instead of P. And then let's make a new VEC4 new position. Position gets model transform matrix times our vector V. Okay, that hopefully looks a little bit. Let me shorten that up a little bit, see if we can get this kind of on the screen. Hopefully this code is looking a little bit like what I said we do. We have the model transform matrix times, I guess I could put times here, times V. I'm applying this matrix operator against this vector. Same exact same thing here. And the next step is to do the projection matrix on the new position. Here's the new position. Our new position was the result of applying the model transform against the vertex and out will pop our projected position. So let's let's do that. Vec for projected position gets projection matrix applied to our new position. 
Okay, and now that we have that projected position, that needs to be our GL position. Our GL position gets the projected position. Semicolon, save, control shift S. Let's build and see if this works. Control shift B, build succeeded. That doesn't tell me anything. Let's try running it and see if we missed anything. Control F5. And there you go, we got some weird looking triangle. <laughs> we only have one triangle. I forgot something very important over in the the paint call. We said draw elements, we said draw three indices, but of course we have more than three indices in in our shape now. We have this cube and I believe let me oh break point, don't want to break point. Control shift control alt L uh, shape generator dot cpp I believe we had several more indices. Oh look at all these indices we have. So we have num indices. Let's save that num indices away when we get it back. Uh, in the send data to OpenGL, we get the make cube in our shape. So let's say gl int num indices. Let's have a nice global static out there. And then num indices gets shape dot num indices. And I believe that that's a uint, gl uint. Let's be consistent, uint. And then down here where we say draw, we can say draw the number of indices. Control F5, and hopefully we get that same look we saw in the previous video. Look at that! Isn't that the side of the box we wanted to see? That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Let me let me bring up the uh, the program again. I showed you what was going on. Here we go, right here. It's, I know it's hard for you to see because this program's way too big for my recording area, but that looks a lot like what we just rendered, doesn't it? Uh, look, that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Let's go back to what the world looks like. And sure enough, there's our camera looking at the side of the box. And we're looking at the side of the box. Now, I said we were going to render a 3D scene. Well, you know that we're always rendering 2D scenes. That's all our screens can handle. But in the end, we, this is a three-dimensional object. We just transformed it into this projected space and rendered a 2D scene. However, it still looks 2D. We're just looking at the side of the box. <laughs> so in the next video, let's just do a rotate... And, and so we can see the box. Do, I, I want something that looks a little bit more 3D-ish than the side of a box. In fact, if I come here and say, let's rotate around the Y, you can kind of see now that's starting to look like what we want. And I want to accomplish that in our own code, so that's our goal for the next video.